hydrocephalus occur because of increased cerebrospinal fluid accumulation. The cerebral spinal fluid is a colorless fluid. It is secreted in the ependymal cells of the choroid fluxus and then it circulates in the brain and the spinal cord. Let us see the CF circulation in detail before going to the disease condition. You can see the CSF is formed in the choroid fluxus. You can see the choroid fluxus in this picture. From the choroid fluxus, the CSF it reaches the left lateral ventricle then it reach the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle from the fourth ventricle uh, it goes to spinal cord and the subarachnoid base so you can see all those things in this picture so the blue color indicate the cerebral spinal fluid so this cerebral spinal fluid is circulating all over the brain structure and within the ventricles of the brain Every day around 50 to 100 ml secreted in the choroid plexus and it will be circulated all over the brain structure and ventricle finally most of the CSF is absorbed in the venous system by arachnoid granulation. So you can see this arachnoid granulation in the picture from that arachnoid granulation the cerebral spinal fluid absorbed in the bloodstream. This is the entire CSF circulation and absorption. Any disequilibrium in this process that lead to hydrocephalus. Let us see the definition of hydrocephalus. Hydrocephalus is a condition in which imbalance between the production of CSF and the absorption of the CSF. It is characterized by abnormal increase in volume of CSF within the intracranial cavity result in enlargement of the head. Let us see the what is the incident. Around 3 to 4 children per thousand live birth is affected with hydrocephalus. It is one of the congenital disorder among the children. Let us see the different types of hydrocephalus. First one is the non-communicating hydrocephalus. It is otherwise called obstructive hydrocephalus. Next one is the communicating hydrocephalus. It is otherwise called non-obstructive hydrocephalus. We can see the first type that is the non-communicating hydrocephalus. Here there is a obstruction in the flow of CSF that lead to problem with the circulation and absorption. This type is common in children. Here accumulated CSF distend the ventricles and compress the brain structure. In the second type of hydrocephalus, the normal flow of CSF within the ventricle is happening normally, but decreased absorption of CSF in the arachnoid granulation that lead to accumulation of CSF in the space and compress the brain structure. We can see the causes for hydrocephalus. First one is the congenital. It is due to stenosis of aqueduct. There will be a stenosis between third and the fourth ventricle. Because of the stenosis, the fluid will not pass through thoroughly. Some will be accumulated within the ventricle. Then excessive secretion of spiral fluid. This excess is secretion by the epidermal cells of the choroid fluxus. So, this excessive secretion will not be absorbed properly. Then poor absorption of CSF fluid. In case of CNS infection and meningitis, that CSF fluid will not be absorbed properly. In case of head injury and trauma, meningomyelitis and any obstruction in the CSF pathway that means due to any tumor or in case of malignancy. So the obstruction because of this obstruction the cerebral spinal fluid will not pass properly and it will be stagnated within the system cell. So these are the various causes for hydrocephalus. Let us see the pathophysiology. Before going to the pathophysiology, we can see what is happening in the alter physiology. First, we can see this picture. 
So first picture shows there is no hydrocephalus, the normal amount of CSF that is present in the ventricle. So there is no enlargement of the ventricle, so all the process is going properly that means CSF secretion, CSF circulation and the CSF absorption. These three processes are going properly without any problem. Whereas in the hydrocephalus here, there will be excess amount of CSF that is stagnated within the ventricle that so why the ventricle become dilated and distended and this lead to pressure within the ventricle that compress the brain structure and there will be a enlargement of the head. So this is the altered physiology happening in case of hydrocephalus disease condition. Now we can see the pathophysiology in detail. So due to the etiological factors either it is obstruction or poor absorption of cerebral spinal fluid there will be a increased accumulation of cerebral spinal fluid within the ventricular system. So that lead to dilatation of the ventricles and increased CSF pressure in this ventricular system that lead to compress the brain against the cranium. Finally, there will be enlargement of the head, vomiting, increased intracranial pressure, headache, all the signs of symptom will be appear. This is the main pathophysiology of this hydrocephalus. What are the clinical manifestation of hydrocephalus? Now you can see this picture, this picture shows all the signs and symptoms. You can see this head of the baby, there will be a bulging of anterior fontanella, enlargement of the head, widening of the suture, sunset eye, visible scalp pain. All these signs and symptoms occur because of increased intracranial pressure. The child will find difficulty in sucking and feeding and there will be a high pitched cry that is mainly due to increased intracranial pressure and restlessness, irritability, vomiting and headache it occur because of increased intracranial pressure. Some child also land up with seizure disorder. So these are the various clinical manifestation that occur due to hydrocephalus. Let us see the various investigation done for the hydrocephalus first x-ray the x-ray finding will show there will be a widening of the fontanel and suture and the ct and mri it will help to find out any ventricular enlargement is occur because of this increased cerebral spinal fluid and the pneumoencephalography it help to identify the location of obstruction and the dilatation of the ventricle ophthalmoscopy to find out any papilledema and percussion, this percussion of the human skull, it will produce a cracked spot sound that is McVen signs. So these are the various investigation or diagnostic evaluation that we should be carried out for the hydrocephalus baby. Let us see the treatment for hydrocephalus. First one is the medical management. Medical management is only the temporary management. Here we are giving osmotic diuretic to reduce the CSF production. And next one is the installation of shunt device. It is only the surgical procedure. The shunt has been placed either ventroperitoneal or in the ventroatrial. So in these two manner that excess amount of CSF will be drained out. You can see these two way of shunt in this picture. The first one is the VP shunt, second one is the VA shunt. Let us see the shunt placement. So this shunt contain a one bay wall mechanism the direct flow on one direction and prevent reflex. The valve closed to prevent reflex of blood into the ventricles and open as ventricle pressure rises allowing the CSF fluid pass from the ventricles into the bloodstream. Now we can see ventricular peritoneal shunt, it is otherwise called VP shunt. In VP shunt directs cerebral spinal fluid from the lateral ventricle or the spinal subarachnoid space to the peritoneal cavity. In VP shunt the tube is passed from the lateral ventricles of the brain through the bark hole subcutaneously to the 
right lower quadrant of the peritoneal surface. So, from there it is absorbed into the blood stream. Next we can see the V A shunt, it is otherwise called ventricular atrial shunt. It is passed from the dilated ventricle and it discharges the CSF fluid into the right atrium and the superior vena cava then it is absorbed in the blood stream. This is the V A shunt. Let us see the what are the warning sign that when the shunt is not working properly. If the sun is not working properly, child may have the signs and symptoms of headache and irritation, vomiting, bulging fontanella and signs of infection that is fever and pain around the shunt area. These are the signs and symptoms we can expect in the children after placing the shunt. If the shunt is not drained properly, that means some blockages occur because of this the child is getting these are the signs and symptoms. Let us see the prognosis of hydrocephalus. The prognosis of hydrocephalus is depend upon the daily diagnosis and prompt treatment. So, we can see the nursing management of baby with hydrocephalus. First, we can see the preoperative care. Daily, we have to assess the head circumference and check the vital signs to find out any deviation from the normal. Then provide adequate nutrition, provide small and frequent feed that is very very essential. After giving feeding, play, you have to place the child in right side lying position and elevate the head in order to prevent the aspiration. Then while turning the baby in one side, we are, the both head and the body should be turned together. Uh, we have to provide firm pillow to the baby for supporting the head and shoulder. While lifting the baby, we have to lift with the head and shoulder. Then provide eye care daily and we have to prepare the mother psychologically and explain the need for love and affection. We have to properly explain the disease condition also. Let us discuss the post-operative care of baby with hydrocephalus. Check the vital signs hourly to hourly and record it and elevate the head of the baby at 30 degree. Check the baby for any signs and symptoms and firmly support the head and shoulder and we have to give special care in the uh, shunt area and avoid positioning the child to lie down in the incisional area. Make the baby to kneel per oral in the initial period and fluid and electrolytes should be maintained through the IV fluids. Oral feeding can be started, the child can be recovered. Always give small and frequent feeding and encourage take more amount of protein containing diet. And we have to assess the child for any evidence of increased intracranial pressure. Daily assess the head circumference and the anterior fontanella for any bulging. And administer the medication depending upon the doctor's order and monitor the shunt for any infection or any malfunction and relieve the anxiety of the mother. So these are the post-operative care of baby with the hydrocephalus. Now we can see the complication. There will be an increased intracranial tension occur if the shunt malfunction. So dehydration is suspected if the fontanel is sunken. Output is decreased or any dryness is absorbed around the shunt. Then parental advice, we have to advise the mother and importance of follow up and the importance of taking care of the shunt area. If the child shows any complications or any evidence of infection about the shunt like vomiting, uh, headache, fever. Ask the mother to immediately report to the hospital for further treatment. I hope this video will be helpful for you. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe.